everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to give you an overall run through of the evidence we have for climate change. Now, as always, if you check out the description box below, you do have access to a free lesson worksheet that you can complete and make notes on while watching this video to help you with your home learning or to just help you create a nice set of revision notes for your upcoming GCSEs. So let's start with artwork. So one vital aspect of the complex issues surrounding climate change is the difficulty of measuring climate variations in previous eras. And this is because comprehensive records were not kept during those periods of time. We didn't record temperature changes. We didn't record CO2 emissions because we didn't have the instruments to do so. Now, this is where artwork comes in and why it's important that we gather some sort of baseline against what we're currently seeing happening in our climate today. So what you have on the screen are two images that were actually drawn, created, painted of the frozen River Thames in the late 1600s. And this is a period that is called the Little Ice Age where we have those colder temperatures and a colder climate in the UK in this particular example. Now, artwork in, in this respect has then proven quite useful to compare current climate records that we have based on instruments that are now very effective and useful uh, and more developed. And we are able to compare what we are seeing now to previous eras through artwork. Now, you might ask yourself to what extent can paintings or other artwork created during these earlier periods be regarded as accurate and reliable to um, give us an indication of weather conditions and atmospheric conditions at the time. But because we have no other records, artwork can be seen as very important in this respect or at least give us some type of guide to be able to compare what we're seeing now to previous eras regarding climate change. Now, we then have a piece of evidence known as ice cores. Now, an ice core is a core sample that's typically removed from an ice sheet or a high mountain glacier. So scientists working in both Greenland and Antarctica have been investigating information trapped in the ice to uncover evidence of past climate change for quite a few decades now. The snowfall from each winter is compressed by the following winter's snowfall and this repeats over time and each layer of snow contains chemical evidence about the temperature of the climate at that particular point in time. So each year and each layer of snow that is added to these mountain glaciers or these ice sheets traps gases from the atmosphere that the snow fell through. So gradually the layers turn to ice and over thousands of years these layers have built up and up and are now thousands of metres thick. So by drilling down into the ice, scientists can extract older and older ice cores. The further down you drill, the older the ice is. Now, scientists will then take these ice cores and do a chemical analysis of these various ice layers, as well as the gases they contain. And these have now revealed a record of climate over the last 420,000 years. That's how old some of these ice cores are. Now, this evidence then suggests that the climate has indeed gone through natural cycles of colder glacial periods and warmer interglacial periods throughout the years. So overall, these ice cores show that the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has also gone up as well as down as part of the natural cycle. But what these ice cores are revealing is that the, the newest ice within these ice cores at the very surface of these high mountain glaciers or ice sheets is containing and trapping more CO2 than previous years. So moving on from that, what we then can construct is evidence from graphs and we can construct graphs that show how temperature has fluctuated over time 
as well as concentrations of CO2 emissions in the atmosphere. And if you compare these two graphs, for example, the top graph showing us those CO2 concentration amounts in the atmosphere and the bottom graph comparing it to the temperature change from present to previous, you can see these trends are actually matching. They are fluctuating up and down, increasing and decreasing roughly at the same speed and at the same point in time, which therefore leads us to conclude that the more CO2 we have in the atmosphere, the more our temperature increases, leading to these glacial, these colder periods, as well as these interglacial or warmer periods. You then have other graphs, notes such as the hockey stick graph, which is a graph showing the increase in the Earth's temperature over the last 1,000 years. This graph is very disputed by some scientists because there is a very large variation um, in the actual temperature data. So you have your blue and red lines showing your average, but you then also have your wider, darker, greyish areas either side of that line showing the temperature variations and this is just in the northern hemisphere as well and this is why some scientists dispute the hockey stick graph solely because it's based on an average and if you have a higher temperature one year or more extreme values your average will be influenced in a very extreme way so this is where we come on to a very reliable graph known as the Keeling curve so the Keeling curve was actually constructed um, based on some scientific work that was taken place in the 1950s, 1958 to be more specific. So in 1958, a team of scientists began to take regular measurements of carbon dioxide concentrations from the atmosphere. The scientists realised that local levels of carbon dioxide could be higher if the sampling took place close to industry or factories or even areas that experienced traffic congestion. So the scientists actually decided to conduct their tests on Mauna Lao in Hawaii, a volcanic island. They thought that this would actually give them readings that would represent average CO2 levels in the atmosphere because they were away from industry and they were away from high volumes of traffic. Now, what resulted is that the sampling that has been conducted regularly ever since has created this graph known as the Keeling curve. And what you can see on the graph on the screen is that it shows increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at that particular location. So scientists are now using the Keeling curve to suggest that if it is increasing in Hawaii, where there is little industry and little traffic congestion, it possibly is the same in various locations around the world and therefore suggests that we are seeing increased levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Now this leads on to recent temperature changes where we have constructed uh, a graph to show global temperature changes for the last 1000 years and as you can see the overall trend we are seeing is that the average temperature of our planet is increasing over time with the biggest increases taking place ever since the 1980s. And there are many reasons for this, for example, economic development, the introduction of air transportation and air travel, as well as more efficient ways to burn fossil fuels. Again, this is something that scientists can connect um, to what we currently know is happening on our planet to the evidence that surrounds climate change. We also then have other pieces of evidence that we can use that are more natural and physical based, such as tree ring evidence. Now, tree growth rings um, are added each year the tree is growing. So when you were to cut through the trunk of a tree, you will see something similar to what you can see on the screen here, a tree trunk with various rings inside. And these rings actually represent um, the years of the tree, so how long the tree has been there, with each year um, a new ring being added to the trunk. So we can basically count the rings and see how old the tree is. Now these rings are recording as well the growing season. So the thicker the ring, the better the growing season. And then what we can then do with these tree rings is they can provide us information based on the thickness of the ring 
on the temperature and the moisture that was in the atmosphere at the given time if we count back through the years of the tree's life. And again, if we have higher temperatures and more moisture in the atmosphere, that could again lead to more evidence surrounding the issue of climate change. We then have something that is ever more present on the news now in the 21st century, and that is melting ice sheets. So there has been a lot of concern about the Arctic sea ice because our Arctic sea ice has thinned roughly by about 65% since 1975. And in 2014, its extent was actually at an all time low. So we had less ice in the Arctic than in previous years. So every year, scientists are actually seeing that Arctic sea ice is shrinking in those winter months, as you can see on the screen. And this also links to glacial retreats as well. Glaciers are these huge um, bodies of ice that cover mountainous areas and land. And what we are seeing is these glaciers are retreating, they are moving back because they are melting. And it's estimated that some glaciers may disappear completely by 2035. And the reason for that is the rising increase in temperature. We also then have more extreme weather around the world being linked to global warming. Now, global warming can directly affect global pressure circulation, so atmospheric pressure, which affects weather and climate. But our changing weather is leading to areas actually experiencing more extreme weather, such as droughts, floods, freezing conditions. These have all been heavily linked to global warming and they have been intensifying um, natural major events, such as monsoon seasons, and recently on the BBC News, they actually shared how climate change has created a huge loss in terms of economic profit and money due to the extreme weather events that climate change is causing. And if you are interested in expanding your geographical knowledge further, I'll put the link to this particular BBC article in the description box below. We then have sea level rise. Again, something quite um, connected to these melting ice sheets and glacial retreats is the fact that we are having warmer temperatures experienced on our planet leading to these ice sheets melting and these glaciers melting which is adding fresh water into our seas and into our oceans. So that increases the level of water that is seen in these oceans and seas around our planet. But we also have oceans expanding. So we have thermal expansion taking place, which is when you have your, your ocean or sea water actually warming and these particles then expand. And that again is contributing to sea level rise. So islands such as the Maldives are being heavily affected from the risk of sea level rise, as well as various other island nations within the Pacific uh, Ocean. And what we are starting to see in these regions, these areas of low lying land, is that they are experiencing large amounts of coastal flooding and they are needing to build sea walls to prevent the sea from actually swallowing up their islands due to sea level rise. Again, this is another piece of evidence for climate change because this hasn't happened in previous centuries. And therefore, these island nations are really feeling the brunt of the effects of climate change. And this is, again, one piece of evidence we have to say that climate change is happening now. We are also seeing warning signs from nature. Uh, where we have these changes in temperature and precipitation um, affecting the distribution, but also the behaviour of animals. So more commonly um, and most frequently on the news, we're seeing reports of polar bears um, coming further inland into populated areas within Canada, for example, because they're in search of food. Or you have, you know, horrible pictures like this where we have polar bears stranded on icebergs or ice sheets that have broken away from the Arctic and have actually um, been carried further out into the ocean. Now polar bears need a really vast amount of sea ice to be able to hunt and therefore every year because that ice is actually um, decreasing in size 
they are losing their habitats and the areas they hunt on and it is actually threatening their survival because they are unable to search for food. We also have various other warning signs from nature. We have studies that have suggested that the timing of, of natural seasonal activities, such as when trees flower or birds migrate, is actually happening um, a lot earlier and it is advancing. We have a study of birds nesting in the mid 1990s, discovering that 65 species nested an average of nine days earlier than in the 1970s. And when this study was repeated in 2014, it is now 15 days earlier, which is showing that our seasons are changing and that is forcing the behavior of these animals to actually advance. So birds migrate south for the winter, for example, a lot earlier than they used to. And that, again, is something that we can link to the evidence of these recent temperature changes as a result of climate change. And finally, we have uh, something known as pollen analysis. So pollen you've probably heard of because it comes from plants um, and plants when they die and decay, they get preserved in sediments at the bottom of lakes, for example, or in peat bogs. Now, scientists can then dig up these uh, various pieces of uh, sediment and discover plants and pollen. And they can then identify and date the preserved pollen from this sediment to show the species that were living at the time. Now, scientists know the conditions that plants live in now, so we are able then to have a look and analyse that preserved pollen from similar plants. And that will then help us to show the climate conditions and whether they are changing or whether they were similar in previous eras. Again, leading to the conclusion of whether climate change is becoming more and more present on our planet. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, please like and subscribe if you are finding them useful and I will see you next time.